right, we'll call this meeting to order. This is Wednesday, June 8th. This is the Broadwater County Commissioner's meeting, and this is some leftover business from Monday. Win Meehan Sheriff, Brandon Harris Undersheriff, Seth Wenzel Detention Center Administrator, Budget Reviews, Decision postponed from Monday. There we go. I think that's the biggest, I mean, your, your budget in whole, um, it, it's a little concerning, but what is most concerning is that cash on hand. Yeah. Well, last year we started out with 14, I think it was 14, through 14, 3 or 14, 5, if I remember correctly. I want to say it was like 14, 3, so. And we knew it was going to be an issue then. That's just city stuff. Oh. Um, and then that's what we had to, I was trying to find that letter we all signed off on last year. I have a copy. Yeah, and um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of paperwork in, in the office. Um, so did we do the trans? Did we do the transfer? I guess when I look at it, we did. So the fourteen thousand six hundred six when we had extra, right? Yes. From public safety. Yeah. And then we have sixty six. We're not sure where that was coming from. Was that? Was that? I think that was just the savings, wasn't it? From. Uh, oh. Extra yeah. revenue mm -hmm. and over. Estimated expenditures. Yeah, because last year we had that question. The big question was, is, is in, 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 in that one, well, I never did find the answer. I don't know if you guys did or not. Was in the 2300 line item uh, under that, you had uh, operations. I think it was operations. But for three years in a row, we were 141. It was either 141, 300, or 141, 800. 
consecutively three different fiscal years. And so in three fiscal years, we were a whole lot of 500 and change difference. And, and that last year on the, on the budget, um, the preliminary budget request was 2055. And there was no, I couldn't find any reason, reason, for the reason why we had that increase. And um, so that, I think that's where the part of that came in. And then we had another another line item that I think is the vehicle maintenance. Um, we had a pretty significant increase, or we had a not significant increase, but it was a substantial amount of money with basically a fleet that was uh, two to three years old um, and, and actually in pretty good shape. So, you know, we were looking at running around, I think the year before we still had some 2008 Durango's that we were operating, and we had a lot of maintenance issues with those, then we had the, the, the new Ford Interceptors, and so we had an increase in some savings in there as well, and I think that's kind of where that came from. But um, I don't, I haven't seen anything on the 30,000 on the maintenance, so I don't know if that ever came back or not. But when this was done, when was this done? This was done last year, and it was dated June 1st, I think it was, I think it was after, wasn't it? It wasn't it sometime in August when we sat down and did this. What's on the, what's the, what's the date? Yeah. Well, yeah, but see, the letter's dated June 1st of, of 15. Um, and so I thought we did this a little later we had a discussion about it. But, um, you know, that money not being transferred until May 18 of 16, it's gone. You know, that, that kind of causes us no problem. And that took us down to that 125 in the hole, which is apparent on this one. And we're still trying to find that safety one. But, um, you know, one of the things that came up in the, uh, the report or the conversation last night uh, at city council was um, basically, you know, we have done in the past for a long period of time. So detention centers is helping fund public safety. We all know that that's nothing new. Um, it's not a surprise or anything like that. So, um, you know, that's kind of where that is. Um, and, I, and I guess I, in the same aspect, I don't want to get that habit either. Um, I want to be able to make sure that we have the, the right amount of meals that are allocated. That's the reason. That's why they, on that one, they put the new jails out. Detention was supposed to help. Public safety is In fact, we're all together. Well, that was the reason that there'd be some revenue coming from that. Yeah. And I think that in an aspect, that, you know, I didn't. I, don't disagree with that philosophy. The problem is you're banking on soft money. You know, to try to justify funding public safety with the revenue expected from a detention center, even if it was a regional facility, is banking on whether or not a judge or Department of Corrections is going to put people in. And right now we're in the upward swing where that works out really well, and our revenue this year is very apparent with it. So, you know, we're, we've exceeded our expected revenue by Oh, 120,000 as we sit here right now, not counting what was billed out in May. Um, you know, that's a number. We were at 760,000 at, at the end of April. Um, but we also know in 2011 and 12, uh, the courts kicked everybody out. And so then we had a huge debacle in that aspect. And, and that was still under the public safety umbrella. Um, and so that expected revenue didn't come in. And so that's something I think. I guess is, is trying to be financially responsible. I think we just need to find that middle ground of what is going to need, and then if we have excess in, in that aspect, let's put it in places to um, help out with the other things. And then the conversation that most of us have had uh, about the budget this year is, you know, the expected revenue is, is if we have a year like we did this year, you know, I would still like to have a pretty hard line on <coughs> Required meals, but then if there's extra revenue, then let's infuse that into those CIPs versus them coming up filled. Um, that I think that is kind of what is probably the, the the best idea for everybody is to do something of that nature. Then it opens that door for other folks to use pill money or or whatever it may be. So I, th I was thinking about this this morning. Um, I thought about it all night. <coughs> I have uh, yeah. 
Cut a little bit of both. So with those that information that was said at city city council last night, you have two things that happen. First of all, uh, those two thousand what we built the jail in two oh five. Well we moved in in oh five this year. Okay. Yeah. So in oh four when that when that those numbers came out, you're building a jail. Uh, before 2011, you're showing, hey, look at what look at what we did, proving to all the naysayers that I told you this was a good idea. Now in 2011, when the bottom dropped out, it was everyone was like, well, no, it was a good idea for a little bit. So <clears throat> to take those numbers in real perspective is a you were trying to build a, a facility, then b you were showing people, look, this is what our facility has accomplished. Both, both situations, you were trying to accomplish something. Now you guys are just trying to do business as normal. So to add in your detention center, and, and I thought about this quite a bit, is to add your detention center revenue to support your public safety, you're going to go back to the way of thinking of 2007, 2008, and 2009. As this is my cash cow, look at all the money it's bringing in. So what are you gonna do in six years when Lewis and Clark County does open their facility? Well, if you didn't notice that Yellowstone County voters approved a <coughs> bond last night for 9.7 million for 106, 146 beds from the women's side, that's gonna hurt. So, exactly. So you, you're looking at six years to uh, uh, what we started started building it. Yeah, well, it took what two years to build the facility. Pretty much. Yeah, they were they were six or seven months overdue, and they yeah. said they were going to do it in eighteen, and they have taken twenty four, twenty five. Because you know they're not going to Lewis and Clark County, and and they're not going to be open. They're not going to be open and filled that the next day they're open. And, and the other problem is is, is Jefferson County's in the process. Yeah, I, yeah. So you have all the, the. This is the problem, though. Jefferson County. The whole purpose is they want to make money. That's their whole purpose. Lewis and Clark County is looking to make a mini prison because they're offering all all these different amenities with mental health and all this other stuff. So you're looking at people that are. Jefferson County is trying to do what we did several years ago, and I'm not knocking them, but they're going to be hit the face just like we were in 2011 because uh, if Lewis and Clark County when a Lewis and Clark County opens that facility so roughly you have about a handful of years to prepare for and if we continue to look at our our detention center which does make some money as that cash cow we're going to be sitting well not we uh, Commission and you guys are going to be sitting here in a few years Racking your head around the same thing. So to I, I'm not I'm not for Looking at this as okay, you have Eight hundred thousand dollars, which is what a hundred and whatever thousand over what you anticipated Yeah. I mean, and granted, 100000 would definitely help your, your, your public safety, but then, the, and, I, and I said this in the, in the previous meeting, the more that you guys want put into your detention center, the more you're going to be, you're going to burn out your staff, and you're going to bust down that building. And so it's going to cost more for the upkeep, and you're going to be paying more and a lot, a lot more in training. And you've seen that in this last last year. So to the tune of thirteen hundred dollars a month. Exactly. So that's money that you really don't get back. Um, you know, because if if, the, if your staff gets burnt out, you've paid the training and they go off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you get that money back. And we have one doing that right now. Mm -hmm. So which is sad. So I guess I say all that to say this. I was I, I see what what was being I see what the purpose of what was being done in City Council last night, 
but you're looking at skewed numbers. <clears throat> and, and they're not real numbers. And, and so what, and I know just a little bit uh, talking, we need to really sit down in a couple meetings and go through and try to bring this 3% up. We can get you, I mean, that is, that, that's where, yeah, your cash. Oh, 33. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to, by no means, get you up to 33%. That's just physically impossible. Well, we weren't even at that last year, I don't believe either. But um, Because right now, at the end of your budget, you, you, right now you have a month left, correct? Yeah. And you're at 50000 left of your budget? Yeah. 55000 as of the 27th? So, you're less... So, to say that we cannot take money from the detention center, I, I, I don't think that's a true statement. I think some way, shape, or form, we're going to have to tap into those revenues. Mm -hmm. But having to tap into those revenues also shortens you on your other needs, a vehicle, operating systems, whatever it is that you guys need without coming to the commission say, hey, we need this, where, where do you think we can get money from? I think that was the, the <coughs> point of the revenue of the detention center is to keep from coming here and asking for money because you have that revenue in your detention center to do what you need to do, to do your business. Um, but to say that, oh, man. It's, it's, a, it's a slippery slope. More than the comments I made last night at City Council is people have to understand we are the second fastest growing county in the state. We also are the five in the state for crime, for, for violent crime. We have 13 of our own prisoners <coughs> in that facility right now. 13. And it's not changing. Last night, we did a book release on two felony charges because somebody brought in drugs to our facility. No husbands. You know, and all 13 are felons. Yeah, all 13 are felons. And all of them are, for the most part, violent felons. Or persistent felony offenders. And so we look at that, you know, and that's what I told last night. At some juncture, we have to get past this idea that we're a hotel. Because the fact is, is we cannot control people's bad behavior. And that's what we're seeing across the board, is that being stuck between Helena and Los Angeles has created us a huge clientele of bad behavior, especially on the three forks. And again, we can't really spend a lot of time down there. And we're getting a lot of stuff off that interstate because of that. So we're seeing that influx, and so we have to figure out a way, and I think it, it comes down to having conversations, the same thing as the city council last night, is that we all need to sit at the table and say, okay, we want to say expectation of public safety. What do we want to look like, and how are we going to get it there? And I think that you know, we haven't had, in the history that I've been in the office for 16 years now, we've never had sit-downs and discussed how we're going to make it work, what it will to look like. And we don't have everybody who's got a dog in a fight sitting at the same table. And, and so I was really actually happy about last night to hear that people were wanting to integrate city council and county commissioners and, and citizens at large into a, a planning group to say, okay, what is it we want it to do? And, and, and this expectation, because that's one of the frustrating parts for me, sitting down with the city council on uh, numerous occasions, they have no expectations of what they want their public safety to look like. And I've never asked the county commission, what do you want? Everybody just wants to make sure that if they call 911, the bad guy goes to jail. Right. And that's kind of the that's kind of the gist of it. And we kind of want things as it's always been, but it's never been defined. And so it's very hard when you look at the 21st century, you look like you're going into 2017 with a new ball of wax and legislation. How are we going to combat what we do? We've changed our ways in law enforcement event. We now we're in intel-based investigations. We're not so much boots on the ground, we're doing more times than body doing that intel investigation based on instead of going out and doing hands-on. So our jobs changed, our environment's changed, and the people we deal with have changed. And everything's gone through social media in a huge way. Right. So, you know, I guess that's where we have to evaluate as, as leaders of the community to say, what do, we want, what do we want to do with this? Where do we want to go? And, and what's going to be the best bang for our buck? Unfortunately, this is the mess that the three of you guys have heard. Now you have your task with that fixing it. Um, I mean, I can, and here's, and don't get me wrong, I mean, looking at the cash or 
cash reserve right here, cash report, the attention center. And I'm, I'm assuming this is this is going to be this is well, this is 421. So I don't want to be different on But you know, technically, it's three. The intention alone is 354,000, That's a hundred and some thousand over the 32 or 33 percent. Oh yes, that's correct. So we have the ability to transfuse some of that. From over over on the detention side to get that 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 thirty three percent and put it over on the public safety side. Are those funds that can be are those accounts that we can do that with? Yeah, <clears throat> we the auditor does not like that. Right. However, um, because they cannot work with us to marry the two accounts this year, they said go ahead do it. We'll fix it next year. Okay. So yeah, so we'll green light from the end July July first. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Because they're both restricted accounts, is my understanding on this. So you can't go from a restricted account to a less restricted, but you can go restricted. Restricted is my understanding, and maybe I'm completely off. Well, I do know going through the audit report, they did knock us yes. on, uh, on some of that. But as as Chairman Over just said, uh, guys, I just I don't see another way to and, and to I try to do that. The, and I guess that's kind of where, like I tell them, I've told them, you know, we had a discussion Monday, it's a five-year fix. It's, it's probably not a five-year fix. I mean, I look at the budget report on a weekly basis, every week I'm looking at it, trying to fix it. No different than search and rescue. You know, um, I told Brenda, you know what, you want me to fix it, I'll fix it. Stay out of it, let me do it my way, and we'll get it fixed. And she was great, even though sometimes she pulled her hair out. Well, what the hell are you doing? At the end of the day, it worked, and that's and that's kind of where we're at. I want to get to the point where I, I'm, I'm very I, I'm very confident that the three of us sitting at the table right now are going to be doing the same thing. Seth pays attention, Brandon pays attention, I pay attention. It's not we're we're running them up, not paying attention right. to what's going on. I think that we just need to have the ability to do so, you know, in a more um, open and, and, and transparent way. I, th I think this is the best solution to that. I do not want to get in the habit of having to reach over into the detention side of the house to pay our public safety. Right. Ultimately, the number one concern for everybody is they're safe. You know, public safety is huge. Whether they, they utilize the service or they don't, they still want to know that, guess what, when I call 911, so there's going to be someone with a gun and a badge standing on my door. And that's what they expect. And, and sometimes they never use it in their entire lives, and sometimes we have people who abuse the hell out of that particular system um, and so that's the thing that I'm looking at is how do we make it solid we know through Monday's conversation that we, we cut too far we cut into our core of our core strength of that we know that now um, but it also comes from uh, you know I, I use this analogy when the when when you know Brenda had Brenda was always very apprehensive about getting too close to the end of that budget and so she would she would kind of order money and we saw it in June, you know, what do we need? And we saw that big influx, you know, because it was based on what money was left. That's not the way I want to do business. If I have an issue, I'm going to deal with it today, get it off my plate, and we'll, we'll get back to business. And that's how I, I choose to run things. So I don't want that big increase in spending in June. But what happens is we never spend all that, and then it comes to the commission and we have excess. And so we got cut. And because it wasn't utilized. And so when that happened, Brenda would tighten the notch on the belt just a little bit more. And then the next year, you know, uh, the same philosophy Rich Thompson had when he was sheriff. I mean, he did the same damn thing. Is is that, that fear factor that the commission's gonna make them personally liable for going over budget. And then, uh, you know, I think that's, a, our, our budget's a lot like corn and water on this table right now. It's gonna go over the wants. I mean, we can't control Obviously, with the fires last year, we weren't able to control that. So um, I think that we have to have a little bit of fluency and, and, and workability to, to make that happen. That's just my opinion. So um, you know, I, if I think we look at it and say, okay, what do we need? Um, I like having a standard set um, of a set standard set of bills that we know we're going to have, and we can still function and operate on. If we have extra, we have extra. But that extra can also go in to those things that we've had to come and ask for. Vehicle replacement, equipment replacement. Um, you know, our technology, we looked at a 
different records management system because one we have isn't quite what we're looking for, but it's 171,000. <laughs> we ain't got 171,000. You know, we look at the radio communications. Communications is the number one bitch and complaint on every incident that we have because we can't communicate effectively across the board. So we, we've raised, we earmarked 75,000 out of the 901 funds. We got a grant for 148,000, but we're still 148,000 short. So we still have a problem. It's been a problem for probably a better part of three decades, and we're still kicking the can trying to figure out how to get it done. And I think that if we do, if we go in and say, okay, this is what structurally we need, if the mill value goes up, great. If it stays where it's at, we're still okay to function and then get through things. Um, and then if we have excess, then we can kind of take care of those things without having to ask. <coughs> My comment last night is I would rather spend like Sheriff Curry or Sheriff Gookin or Sheriff Hoffman and sit down and have a 30 minute conversation over a budget instead of a 10 month conversation over budget. That would be very handy, especially considering that Sher Sheriff Curry has an $11 million budget and he spends 15, 30 minutes with his commissioners. Okay, I've got less of that and I spend a lot of time, so. But we like you. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably like him, too. And he does have, you know, it's funny, because somebody said he's got mafia money up there, and I, I had to giggle because he, he does have a citizen in his county that writes the sheriff's office a check for a million dollars a year. I don't have that. I wish I did, but I don't. Um, I don't think Ted Turner's probably that big of an advocate of the Broward County Sheriff's Office if he's going to write us a check for a million dollars. Have you asked? No. <laughs> uh, they, they did go to him. Years ago, for a boat though, didn't they? Or they were trying to get. Well, I think they were trying, but but it it would not benefit him any because he doesn't have any lake property or anything. So no. there was somebody that got hold of someone in his company. That, it was Ben and Rich. It was, it was a long time ago. Yeah. You know, I'm oh, so. just throwing a shot in the dark. But why don't we write a joint letter? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. the city, the county, the sheriff's department, fire, and ask for what we would like for public safety. That would benefit him. Fire, if it was split between fire, ambulance, law enforcement, justice, <clears throat> all of it. And we all come together as a united community. We got to tap into some, we, we have to think outside the box in this. Because uh, to, to make you whole, I, I think those are the only ways to think outside the box. I mean, you, and, and even that idea, I fully expect to yeah. know, but let's at least do the ask. Yeah. I, I hear everything you're saying, and I think we're all on the same page. I think what we need to do is, one, short term, how do we get your department to November? Two, long term, how do we build your budget for next year, and where do we find the, the revenue? And then three, how do we strategically plan, because you're right about the detention center. It's going to have to be what it has been through this last couple of years, um, the cash cow, for lack of a better word. And this year, too, it's going to have to bail out. But we've got to figure out a way, like you said, to put it into CIPs, to have a strategic plan for where that revenue goes, because someday we're going to need it, like we did in 2010 11. Um, so, you know, I kind of think maybe for today we should focus on how do we do the short term? Right, well, June? And I, and I think that, you know, I don't know if this, this, in the balance over here on the cash side of this, of 2302. I don't know if that is money from this year's revenue. Is that part of that? Do you guys know? It should be. Can I see your report? I mean, so the, the revenue that's come in for that, is that, is that being put into that, that account? So the 120,000 that we're over, you mean the revenue coming in for the detention yeah. center? Is it going into the detention center? Is it going into that account right there? Uh, or is that money that was left? <laughs> so we had the cash reserves and we had money left over from last year. So, so the question I have is, is, is we know at the end of the day this year, uh, we've been averaging between the 70 and $77,000 mark for monthly revenue for the detention center. I don't have a number of what Tammy billed out. She was working on it yesterday. I do know that we're at 760 and change um, in, in that. So we're, we're 120 excess there. We're about 120 excess over here. I know the one report, if I can find it, from the transfer of funds for from last year. And I guess that's the other question I have is that 
this one doesn't reflect any of that additional revenue. Um, it does reflect the 200 and something out. I forget what that yeah, the is. so this one was printed 421. Yeah, mine's a month later. So I remember there's only 154 in that particular one. Is that what that says? Yeah, and the thing is, is as we get closer to the end of the year, this is going to change because it's going to be updated more often. Um, can I ask a question about the, <laughs> the detention center revenue? We have a report for, um, it looks like it's missing April, May, and June for revenue. Do you have an, an estimate on how much is coming in for, towards the end of the year? Well, April was, April was 76 by right here, actually. So, April, And that's with the guesstimate of May and June. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, right. and I know we, we we had some numbers that kind of we had some days that we were down in that forty two. It was 43. this month and we're gonna be down a little bit this year. We said thirteen of our own. Um, Th that's the highest you guys have been throughout the year, correct? Is thirteen year old? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much a record. Yeah. 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 That's not counting the days. I mean, every day somebody goes to jail on a misdemeanor. I mean, yeah, so there's, there's, like, there's, like, there's like, right. yeah, or, or less than a day sometimes, but, you know, so there's. There's money we're spending that we really could be saving. Valley County, they have a misdemeanor probation officer that works with the victim of this. Oh, that, well, that, it's they're not really just in jail. I mean, they're, 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 one of our biggest things is killing us, and, and one of the things that, I don't know if you heard about the argument from the county attorney and myself and the 24-7 Designed and we have you get three feathers. And, and one of the things is we had a gal, and I told him, quit spending my money. And I said, because we arrest her, have to have a full time officer go down. After after she blows hot twice every year with the detention staff, the officer has to go in and grab her, take her downstairs, in talks her down there, and then he's got to do good work. The detention staff's got to book her in, the dispatcher's got to book her in, history, fill out the fingerprint card. Or then her to come up here and get a war again. And I said, You're killing me because every other day we're doing the same thing. I said, Three failures, you're done. And they, they kicked her out of jail again after the, third, after the fourth time. And I said, Go back on 24 7. No. No, no, no. And Corey won't argue, and we got in front of hell with an argument over it uh, because of the fact is that it's designed for them and, and not to sound like a pompous ass if I told him it's the ship's program, it's not the judge's program, it's not the county attorney's program, it's the bill who ran by the sheriff, and that's why it's there. And so we come to an understanding, but that's one of those things that has a cost to it. Our, our misdemeanors, Kirk Flynn's throwing people out left and right. The problem is we get fed. And that's where it's killing us, because a lot of our misdemeanor offenses are going back out of the bill with two or three days later. officer to deal with those type of behaviors, but the problem is you still have to have an accountability issue on the back end of that, because I think the team pilot has got to be solved with. So we, that's just a reality of the things. Are these yeah, transients, or are they, you know, most of them, you know, believe it or not, most of the people we deal with, I can't figure out why they're even here. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's literally pick, like they say, oh, just, it looked like a nice place, we stopped. Reality is, is that there's no work here, and a lot of them don't have a license, a lot of them don't have a car. So they come here, they get on their welfare, they get their assistance, they get on their Section 8, and guess what? Since there's no work here, they say, well, you try to find a job. But most of the population is very transient. 
I mean, I'd be looking at a lot of our seniors and our elderly folks are starting to pass away. And the people that are coming in on the backside of filling those homes up aren't from here. And they don't bring anything to the community except for their drug problem and their basic lack of respect for other people. I mean, um, you know, it's, and it's, you know, you look at the horn theft case, you know, people are out stealing horns. I mean, Marvin's probably like the better part of Mm, he's probably over 100 man hours into that investigation alone. That's not the only one. That's not the only one that he There's two other officers. You know, so there should have been charges filed on that year. Yeah, uh, yeah there should what be a warrant sitting on Corey's desk. We got the truck that they drove. It was a small so truck out of Missoula. They got the guy. So they just leave. And that was, that was still a nursing home call. Or was it all local? No, no, no. no. So the, the, I mean, one, the, 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 the one local that we had was on the BSC theft, where they went out to the camper at BSC and stole all the horns there. But they also stole all the horns out of White Sulphur. So yeah. they, okay. that was one of our local kids, and then his, his little cronies. The group that came in and nabbed the Rousers and everybody else, that truck was stolen out of Missoula, and Missoula never reported it. Um, and High Patrol even had it abandoned on the side of the road, but they never reported it. So when they finally found it in Helena, we had it all on Facebook and everything. The gal and all this truck's been sitting here since Friday. So they went up and nabbed it. And the truck stolen, the person who stole it has a $25,000 warrant. The, the female party involved, she's got a $15,000 warrant for arrest. We found an ID, a prison inmate ID in the truck. And that guy's been scum and probationer. They don't even know where he's at. And there's one other person involved in it. But you're talking about people from not even our area that came in and they really kind of spotted about this. Um, Checks on, on Paul's account, contents, was play, and places of that nature. So it's it's one of those the the geographical boundaries that we're dealing with now. It's the hard. I mean, it's they're coming from all over. So so not to yeah, switch you, but um, so you're going to projected tentatively. You'll be almost. Close to eighty-four thousand over your projected revenue. No, no, I'll be close to thousand. So your projected revenue was forty-eight seven hundred seven hundred forty-eight thousand five ten. Should be six forty. Six forty. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's for board of prisoners. The other is total. Okay. Yeah. So six forty. Yeah. Six forty yeah. even. Uh, five seventy-five. Yeah. Six forty five seventy five. Sorry. Do you know off the top of your head this is not a fair question off the, the cuff, but what percentage is profit for our out of towners? For our DOC? No uh, yeah. Well just for DOC. Well, I mean it's the same um they all get billed the same, so they're still at sixty three fifty. Uh, so you're looking at uh, you're spending about just under nine dollars a day for meals, and then if you broke down, I mean, you're, you know, if you broke down cost and housing, you would have to look at you're probably look at maybe 30, 40 cents a day for electricity for each inmate. You're probably looking about the same for water. You're probably looking at about 10 to 12 cents a day for the cable when you look at breaking it across the board. Um, but then you have the officer, you know, you have the staff wage in there, and so. So in that 1800 you're you're looking at having, um, especially right now, you're looking at one to two officers on the floor. So you're looking at, at a 10 hour shift, you're looking at $150 per officer, just without any other benefits. And then you look at um, one dispatcher, because um, we have those in, in uh, we have people in the academy from there as well. So you're still looking at another $150. So, yeah, so, yeah. so we're, we're looking at probably, you know, on an average day, um, depends on the day. Wednesdays are overlap day. It's a little different story. We have everybody that works on that day. But depending on that, you're, you're probably looking at somewhere in an average day is we're spending um, probably around $1,100 a day. So um, you have about 
seven hundred revenue. Probably pretty close to that. So. So that's about a third to be conservative. Maybe forty yeah, percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, here's the only thing about Valley, just to take us back, is that is a successful program and it's paid for itself in one year. Yeah. Um, there's a grant that got them started. It can't be just Mills that answers this whole question. It can't be just the detention center that answers this whole question. It's got to be, and if it is going to be just Mills, then the, the public needs to be informed. Right in on this. Exactly, and they're both. Grants, we've got to get back to grants. That's the other thing that Dave's, um, you know, graph wasn't showing is when we lost all those grants. Revenue yeah. plummeted. Tanked. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and, and the thing is, is you look at, you know, I, and it's not get any better no. because the, the, the national debt is so high. You look at just in drug forfeiture, um, and I'll use the drug task force in this aspect, is since, uh, you know, the, the federal government was, they had to cut so many places, they took away ethical sharing. Um, so in the federal case that we worked, it was, uh, let's say we seized $100,000 and we took it to a federal case. Uh, there was no there was no kickback from that. So, because the uh, federal government had to cut about, they had to make up for $800 million. So they're not holding up all that ethical sharing from local cases that are generated around the nation. So, you know, that's, that's part of the problem as well. Not only did they have funding with grants for the, the program like they used to under the cop grant and everything else, and now they're taking, <laughs> taking, away, taking money away that you, you would expect to come on another end. And, and to top it off, uh, one of the problems that we've had, and I do have an MOU with Border Crime Control in this aspect, is that with going to Spillman, um, they being trying to develop their, their crime data reporting um, has kept us in non-compliance for, well, I finally had two months that I didn't have an issue. I mean, I, I, it would show that it all passed on my side. I'd submit it, I'd have failures, and then nothing that I can control. But that also prohibited us from having grants. It also put the drug task force in jeopardy because of, I was unable to report uh, correct information. So that's one of the things that's really prohibited us from some of these grants as well, is because the fact is, is our crime data is not reportable. The other problem that we have is that since we're not compliant on the state level with the SVOR and the tier levels, and as well as the seatbelt law, I believe, um, you know, the federal government docks us 10, 10% every year for being non compliant. And so, uh, even as a state, we're getting dinged in the amount of grant money that we even have available. Because we're not playing well with the federal government, so. Uh, uh, and I'll depend on the, their stance on this uh, transgender restrooms. They uh, they're at the they might lose a lot more money, mm -hmm. like Texas. <coughs> and, um, that's, and, and that's I mean there's you know the, it, it's it's ironic because the federal government says we can't tell you how to operate or how to do your things, but well, we're taking our money. But well, we're taking our money back, and and so. I call it extortion. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and honestly, grants are a good thing, but speaking from experience, I probably spent, I would say, 60% of my time when I wrote the grants, managing the grants. That's the other so, thing we need to address, because it's got to be a piece of the puzzle, but it can't be the whole thing, and it can't be what we're lying, relying on. Yeah. But it's a foot, it's one of the legs of our three-legged yeah. stool. So if you, I mean, if you have someone, I would not suggest the, any one of you three, because you, you, you just... For grants? Yeah. I'm sending Brie to a grant writing school on. And she'll be able to manage it, mm -hmm. and... But she's a nice too, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. That she's not going to be able to... Well, that's, and that's the problem. The problem that you face, and in, in Wynn can attest, when I wrote, we'll just use the UDL grant. Uh, granted, it brought a lot of money into the county, but we spent a lot of money because I honestly spent probably 60% of my time managing that grant. So I was the sergeant at the time, so my, my time as a sergeant was more or less managing a grant. So. Granted, it brought money in, but you spent on the backside a lot of money to have one of your higher ups 
manage that grant. And the and so cover that. and the grant didn't cover that. The sheriff's office ate that. What it did cover was overtime and things like that, with the exception of all the time that it took to do the reports, to set up the compliance checks, to A, B, and C. So if we're going to go the grant right way, you know, I don't know how much Mia charges. Well, like you've got to look at more than just your department, too. Exactly. We've got public health. We've got an RN doing the same thing. Again, yeah. why is somebody at that Statute. pay scale spending time on clerical? Mike Conkey, same thing. He is high paid. Why is he doing his time on clerical? You guys, we need to figure out, I think, a way to have somebody administering writing and following those grants who is a clerk for the county, not exactly. for the sheriff's department, not for the other side, quote unquote, but for all of us together. Jefferson yeah. County, what do they do? Don't you don't they have a specific grant writer? Well Denise Denise and no, it was a um, usually the other when Steve Marcos was there and him and Denise wrote all the grants. Okay. Um, she was important to me and that's the administrative assistant that Tammy's busy all day long I mean she doesn't yeah well it's in, in right grant writing you just can't take any Joe Blow to do grant writing uh, if it wasn't honestly if it wasn't for Julie Fisher up at Board of Crime Control I would have failed at writing my grants um, so you really need to get someone that has the understanding of the grants what each department's looking for to to get you something that that's actually worthwhile uh, the bulletproof exactly the bulletproof yeah. grant that uh, best grant that's easy you just uh, that's what I need so on and so forth and that's no management whatsoever but when you're talking about overtime you're talking about actual real funds it's going to take a lot of time uh, and that the only reason why I asked about Mia is because she she writes phenomenal grants she's one of her she's great. Um, you know and, and, I, and I know like your task force part of their That's where we built into it. The problem is it takes time to win. And that's one of the things that's kind of kicking us in the rear right now is in the last two days I've spent 21 hours in the Right. Right. That's I, I haven't been able to do my work because I've been in meetings, not counting this morning. And so that really is it's it's the, the position the, the job has changed and that's and that's the hard thing and that's a hard thing for the citizens of this county to understand. They're used to the way when Rich on Sundays are driving around the county waiting when everybody's dot the dock and when Brenda get tired of answering the phone, she'd get in her car and drive around. I probably put ten miles on a car day. From here to the house and back. You know, and that's or from the house to either back. Um, and I think that's what I I mean, I never leave my house. If I can get lunch um, and there's a lot of times like Monday, lunch came and went, and next time I went up, next time I went, it's dinner time. Um, and so it's it really the, the environment has changed, and, and, and obviously part of it, part of the things we're dealing with is the stuff that's coming from the national level. When we start talking about police brutality, we start looking at the record records from yesterday, we start seeing local officers being in trouble in the county and city soon. Um, and just so we're clear, is in that particular lawsuit document by one of the sheriff's offices. It's named there twice. Um, over the Matt Thompson uh, uh, issue. issue up with Helen. So um, all board of directors uh, are named in that particular one for the ETF, uh, which I happen to sit on. So I'm not saying that we're named, named but uh, we have a we have a, a promise of policy issues that we need to address with we don't necessarily have a dog in the fight as far as we can tell that's what we have to but um, that's some of the things we're dealing with the obviously the pocket cameras. I have a request, a third request from the ACLU in regards to uh, racial profiling and I haven't had a chance to get back to it. And we all know how the ACLU is about dealing with information. Um, and when they do the Freedom Information Act it causes to So it, it, that's kind of where we're at. It's, it's not even from when you sat with captaincy, things have changed quite a bit in that aspect. Sure. And so um, it, it's really, you know, our, our, our deputies, our group guys, if we see them um, in, in a 10 hour period,
period to get money. Um, a lot of times they walk in the door in the morning and don't see them until the end of the day and they're coming home. And it's not because they're just out jolly, jolly around. Well, it's like we used to have party patrol, and just from like 2003 when I was hired on, we had party patrol Friday nights. Brandon and I would go out, bus parties all night long. I can't remember the last time we've been able to do a party patrol because they're going from call to call to call. Everything. I mean, it's, it doesn't stop. Um, it's, it's constant. Well, there's, we, we understand there's a definite need. So, roughly about one, almost 100, 191, 88, almost two, uh, 192 over projected revenue. Does that sound a lot better? Yeah, it's pretty close. All right. So, where are we, where, you already, the detention center already has a 33% set aside that does not take this into consideration, correct? Hopefully. The only, the only question I had, and that was one of the questions that Debbie was able to ask her, was the fact that when she did the transfer, did that change that bottom line number of 354? Okay. And if it did, it took it down to 154. Now, if my math is correct, the 33% should be about 226,000. Close to that, based on this year's preliminary budget request. Okay. Okay. So, if that's the case, then that's where we need to be. So, really, at 154, we're talking about the seventy thousand dollar change, which we're still back to that one hundred twenty-six thousand. If I could find the form, and I can, I thought I printed it out. Is that you're looking at somewhere in the realm of well, just under fifty thousand dollars in the cash in the cash balance for public safety with the transfusion of the 200,000. That's the 33% though. That's the 33% one. And so how much was that, you said? It's, it's 49,000, I want to say it's like 49,936, I think. That so we'll just rough the 50,000. And how much did you say you needed for the 33% for detention, optimum? It was like 226. 226, okay. So, um, it, 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 and that's, again, um, <coughs> With that's what that preliminary budget request, and so, like, it, it, I think I sent it an email. I, think, I can't remember. Um, I suffer from CRS today, but I, I thought the one of the things when I looked at the expected revenue between, and we took some of the things out because one of the problems we have is that our inmate commissary and our inmate phones is getting put in as an expected revenue on the detention side of the house. Problem is, is that money is actually supposed to go into an inmate welfare, uh, morale welfare account. So things that needs to go back into money used to purchase TVs or equipment uh, or something. Anything that benefits, the, benefits the inmates, the inmates themselves. themselves. Yeah. So we, we have a little issue with that. We're, we're talking just a couple thousand dollars from the expected revenue side. So it's not a make it or break it deal um, by any form or fashion. But um, I think the projector was. I think it's right around 807 um, with all the things that are going on in China. And if we have the CBA agreements. And so if you look at the preliminary budget, there was, there was when you look under uniforms, um, there's the CBA agreements that are in there, the clothing allowance and then, and then the boot allowance every other year. So those two items, and then also, also the initial issue of the uniforms. Um, and then the same thing on the public safety side as well. So there's a little different look So that's 266, excuse me, 266 on the detention side. When I did the plenary budget, one of the things I, I swallowed with was about $43,000 off and from what the revenue was and what the expenditures were looking at. Because obviously we didn't have Debbie, I think Seth was out of the office, so we were out of the office when I had to turn that in. Because I was under the impression that we turned it on the first, so I was trying to get that done. So I was trying to fine tune that a little bit, but I figured 43,000 is a work number that it's not going to kill us to try to get through. And so, and not having Seth there, and Brandon was gone as well, so we couldn't figure out where, kind of what the plan was for the next fiscal year. So that is a very large guesstimate, and just the information I know. So we're, we're pretty close on that. Okay. So, um, and we should have some excess from the budget of this year because we're at 84% as of the end of May. Um, so we have the two pay periods. Um, I can't imagine we're 16% of our budget in, in, in 30 days. So there should be 
you're you talking public safety? Detention. Detention, yeah. okay. So <coughs> detention and dispatch are sitting very well. Oh, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. It's the, the public safety side of the house um, is where the issue is. And we're, we're over line at them. The only thing that I, that I see the transfer of the 20 or whatever it was um, of the emergency safety meals. Now, hopefully that will uh, compensate the overtime issue. Um, pretty close. This is pretty close. One of the things that we've had to do when it's, it's I'll be honest with you, it's, it's taxing at times, is the overtime is not allowed without administrative approval. So no call out, nothing happens without either approval from myself, Greg, or Seth, which means that there's a lot of times our phone rings at 3.30 in the morning because something happened. Um, then that's what we're seeing a lot of, a lot of, a lot of crimes are being committed between the hours of 4 and 5.30 in the morning. And so there's no way around. So the call out's killing us. And, and that was one of the things. So when you look at the plenary budget and public safety this year, it's still at the forty thousand dollar mark because we are seeing such a huge increase in that later in the day. Um, we're seeing a lot of incidents right out of the gate in the evening when everybody's getting home, that, that five to eight o'clock. It's very busy that time. So I thought, well, what if we changed that deputy, you know, like back in the day when I worked for eighteen months, <coughs> nine at night till seven in the morning. Problem is I'm still gonna suffer the call out on the front side. So it's kind of a balancing which side of the sword I want to throw myself on, on um, which how do you call out. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to look at both sides. Take a chance and right now I'm taking the chance of, of the possibility of a call out on the back side versus the front side. And it just seems to be a better business choice in that aspect. So this is kind of where it's at. But it, it has been quite dramatic and then Obviously, the request from the, the county attorney and, and defense counsels, that, that's the other thing that's really played a lot into the last fiscal year, is, is those cases. Um, you know, they want everybody in the damn office out on every call every single time. And, you know, you look at the, the Mickey Harris attempted homicide out of three forms. Seven of the nine sworn officers in the department were sitting there. You know, when you start looking at overtime just for that incident, you're pushing the $2,000 bill. So, um, and then she's going to plead out anyway. So, um, you know, really you're looking at, you know, which way do you go? So, some of those, are, I, don't, I don't know how to get around, but I think if we have the ability to, when you're looking at almost $100,000, um, well, it's a little over $100,000. Um, out of the 191000 um, depends on what's left of the detention budget, which are probably going to have to pull pretty close to $100,000 out of that revenue issue just to get the detention center to 33%. And we, we could probably go down from that because 33 is the max. We could get away with 31, which is probably about 250 and be okay. I don't think um, some of the things we're dealing with like this year right now is obviously the training. We've had two people in, in detention base at every academy class. But after that's done, we're, we're not going to have that issue hopefully. With the promotions, we should have some stability within the ranks down there, so we shouldn't have the, the turnover that we've had in the past. We've had a lot of people interested in from the detention and control side who want to come upstairs and, and fill the, the vacancy that's in the patrol division, but I don't have time or the money to, to spend with 28 months or 28 <coughs> weeks of training. Right. So that's going to go out to a post certified officer only. So we're going to have a little frustration level there. Uh, we might lose one, maybe two out of that, and we'll have to go back through this process again. However, I, I think that really um, the way things are down there right now and what Seth's done uh, in the facility, I really see that it's a, it's a pretty stable area. And so we could probably get away with a little more than 266 to 250, and that would, that would take that transfer to about 99,000. So it still leaves the door open for possibly a $100,000 transfer from the revenue of the detention center over to the public safety side of the house. And we're still looking at about a $266,000. Um, we're looking at that two sixty six as well as that, as that cash reserve there. So, you know, even, you know, we, we probably need to have more of the, the 32, 33 just because we can't control. We don't have that control every two so 
So last year you you went forward with what fourteen percent on hand? No, we increased that through that letter. Yeah. Um, to yeah. ma make up thirty three. It was no, we came we, up with that's like three. 20, I thought it was twenty eight or twenty nine. Is what the total was? Yeah, we didn't bring it all the way up to that. No. Okay. So. Go ahead. Um, I was just looking through all the different numbers. And um, percent two forty three and projected. So if the preliminary budget for public safety right now two forty three three hundred would be the thirty percent uh, um, for that capital version. So in, in that case, if we had the ability to transfer, we're looking at about one hundred fifty thousand um, to start to gain off with. Um, and of course, it's always going to be some some residual from. from uh, Dispatch control as well. Sure. So, you know, and uh, dispatch control really doesn't bring in much revenue, do they? No. And the thing, and when we look at expected revenue, like, you know, like in our public safety, we have the sheriff, we have the civil expense, we have civil. Civil is very dependent on what's going on in society as well. Right. So, you know, we've had uh, halfway decent some year, but not what we've had in the past. You know, you um, just need to get more people with public uh, concealed weapons. Well, everybody's got it. You know. <laughs> but the thing is, is and, and the nice thing is now is it's finally slowing down. Um, you know, where we were averaging 14 a week, now we're now one or two. Okay. It's just good. You know, we're starting to relax a bit. We would want to get on having that now. So we're starting to see that reduction. So when you look at the glory budget review or budget, I didn't increase, even though we had $4,600 in concealed weapons. I don't know if it can be two thousand dollars worth of people wanting to use it, and I didn't change anything. So if we, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. And so, um, you know, three years ago we had a huge influx, and then a lot of we dealt with the Kavanaugh. Um, the more money it's been, I served a lot of papers and posted a lot of property um, during that time, but we haven't seen that since then either. So, um, you know, some of those are pretty static. Hey, when, how, what is the detention, or the detective gross, off the top of your head? 65, 80? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's right around 66. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, if you look at, what are we talking about transferring from the detention? I was, just a rough number, if, if we leave the 33%, it was about, about rough, I guess, about 120. 120 and then plus that 50 we have in cash right now. Um, so that'd be 170. So if you look at your um, cost for your employees, your your We're overall out. budget, uh, detention, or I'm sorry, public safety. Public safety, yes. If you take your originally budgeted total, what you need to get through to November, just a solid 33 percent, um, would be 185,000. If you add the 65 to that, then you're looking at 243. All right. If you look at, you've overspent some of your um, objects by almost 17,000, mm -hmm. but you've underspent by about 44. So you've got a difference there of 27, which just come out as part of your 33%. If you look at the total of the rest of it, not including personnel, your 33%. Is 42,000. A little bit shy there, but not too bad. Right. And this is 33%. Really, 25 is is doable for any department, or at least that's what they tell us. Um, so, and I, and I just if, looked we, if looked we could look at that transfer of the 170, I think we're going to come really close. I think we'll have to readdress this, but I think that gives us a good starting point to I think it's to start building the budget. Great starting point. You know, and I, you know, guys, I hate to take money away from your detention center. I mean, mm -hmm. I do. We have a better things, idea. I'm all ears. Well, we've well, got to do that but, with the long-term yeah, planning, yeah. I think, to yeah. figure out a course. And then I think we start looking at not just the detention center, but some other sources to get us to that what that long-term plan. Yeah. And, and, you know, in, in last year, and so, I mean, so we kind of put this in perspective. Last year was kind of a, a very odd year in the direction of safety. So, you know, we, we had a 
we had a, a need and, and we were granted that need for tech. I mean, that, I mean, that in itself. And it was amazing to see, you know, because we had people in doing so much uh, investigation, there was so much overtime attached to that. And we thought, how we did a detective, we should reduce that overtime. Well, we had the detective work the felony cases and our call outs for, for misdemeanor domestic violence calls and DUI crashes went to the damn roof. You know, like, it kept off real despite your face. And, and so, it, 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 in, a, in a way, it, it benefited a lot because we had more people on the street doing the job that they needed to be doing out there patrolling and keeping the public safe. But on the back side, it, it, created, it had a, a bigger cost value to it as well. Um, and I didn't know that there was, I, it, you know, like I said, on Monday, I didn't have any knowledge that, you know, when I walked in here on the, the, the time I uh, asked him about the detective, I, I asked for approval and, and I was approved and authorized to do so. I wasn't part of that conversation and I needed to, needed to find a funding source for it. Um, and so that's where part of our, our, our salaries has obviously came into play, is that we have a position that mm -hmm. no one found a funding source for. Right. So now it's encompassing the preliminary budget of this year. Yeah, so, which has room to move either way. But um, there's some things in there, I, I, you know, I. My, my idea with the detention center is, you know, I did increase the expected revenue, proposed revenue uh, from 640 to 650, and, and I talked to Seth about it, is that at 650, we're, we're looking at right around uh, an average of 28 um, paying customers. And I think that for this next fiscal year, I don't think that's, it's tough, but it's workable. And I did have a conversation with the sergeants and the, and the it's doable if we do it the right way. Um, and then now that we have our full-time transport, <clears throat> he starts next week just full-time transport. So I told him, feel free to, if you gotta go pick up 15 from Billings, go pick up 15 from Billings if they, you know, if they're gonna stay here. And yeah. So we're gonna have a lot more ways to get people here. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that should help there. Um, Can you be bit. more selective then? Yeah. Um, but we, we did reach out, Carbon County reached out to Brandon um, because they're housing in, in Bozeman and, and Bozeman's just an expensive facility. Um, and and, Bo and the, the bigger problem is is that Bozeman, Bozeman's charging about 120 uh, for, for bed rate. Well, you get Carbon County or hell even us, we can't afford that. But they refuse to house DOC. So when Carbon County inmates go to Bozeman on pretrial detainment the day they're sentenced, both of them saying, now get them out of our jail. And so now Carbon County reached out to Brandon. Uh, he's got some friends down there. And I think Sheriff McQuillan was going to call me. Um, we were trying to come to an agreement where they would just travel or we'd come down and meet them somewhere and then pick up that extra slack for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Muscle so shell bring in yeah. three on Friday this week as well. So, so um, having the, the eastern side of the state really, I mean, I, I know Custer County's. <coughs> Uh, at capacity in their new facility. I know Glenmire and Valley Counties the capacity in this facility in Dawson County's always been at capacity in their facility as well. So it's the the need is there for it and I think we can bank on that for, for a period of time. Um, the, the, and I, I, I think as things go on, but I know VOC is definitely taking a hard look at coming in with us at MSPOA on a very regular basis, trying to figure out how they're gonna do their stuff because they're they can't afford to continue to, to house DOC prisoners in county jails. And so they're really taking a, a different look and a different approach to it. So even though they're working on that and they haven't worked on it for a year, I still feel comfortable that they're gonna be probably two or three years out from putting an action in place. So, but in that time frame, what I wanna do is continue in the fashion that we're on. One of the things I wanna see is a CIP for jail maintenance. Um, I don't like the fact that we have to come and have a discussion uh, about a grinding system for the sewage when reality is, is that should have been something that was implanted into that system at the, at the start. Um, no one knew, no one thought about it, whatever. Um, and it, when it was, when you looked at the, the current numbers in 2003, you know, nine inmates, well, you're not causing a huge influx and I mean, the school does more than, than that, but when you have 47 inmates flushing everything they can, um, we've caused some problems and we understand that now, right. but I think if we can get to a point where you know, we're, we're, we're budging correctly, to say, you know, we look at, you know, like I said, I've looked at the last three fiscal years to determine what it is we're spending on an average, and that's kind of how I look at things. I'm not just pulling numbers out of my head. Um, when it comes to training this year, we sat down and said, okay, we know the classes are costing us anywhere from 
500 to $1,000. We know that. Um, one of the things we're getting beat up on in the courts is our staff is not adequately trained. And so um, not only do we have a state mandate, but then we're losing cases because the juries don't believe that we know what the hell we're talking about. And so we're in a, another fall on the sword, which way or the other, front or back, it doesn't matter, but we're still losing at the end of the game. So I think that we do a CIP for jail maintenance, do a CIP for training um, when those when those high dollar classes come up. We don't have to dip into necessary our, our normal training fund. Thousand dollars for Seth Will's cell phone forensics uh, down in uh, Vegas, and, and luckily he stayed with his uncle down there because we didn't have to pay room and board. We just had to pay a thousand dollars a mile out of the fuel for the car. So um, we didn't look at that. No single thing we have a CIP for that. We have um, we get to a point where we can transfuse some of the detention center money into vehicle replacement. Um, you know, we have a van right now that's it's got a few miles on it, but it's still good for a period of time. You know, one thing just to back up on that, not to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but the CIP from the detention center, the CI or the PILT is for capital expenditures. For vehicles, for weapons, it might be wise to continue to think about PILT for that, and but to set a, a, a plan. Mm -hmm. This is how much we want to do every year because we need to be transferring out every so many years. Right. You know, 30,000 a year or whatever. But to have that every year is just a little bit. Right. But it, it adds up and it doesn't hit pilt all that hard all at once. And, and that's kind of where, I mean, and that's one of the things is that, you know, like I said, it's been a lot, it's been a lot of things. <coughs> um, it's how do we do it better? It's how do we make it better? And so, you know, and the plan for those futures, we know that, you know, four years ago we came in and asked for new firearms because they were all worn out and we needed new ones. And it became a, kind of a, a long, controversial, conversation point um, about replacing firearms. And, and so even the session I had with Seth was if we can, let's take some revenue if we had the ability to put it over that well. So there's not a question. Um, the county, there's lots of things in the county that need to be fixed and, and I don't want, I don't want public safety to have to be the only person um, it seems like that's coming to the table saying I need, I need, I need. Um, You're not. I know, I know, I'm not. But I, you know, I think that you know, I think through you know proper management, I think we're we're going to get to that point where we're in that right area. And what I appreciate, just from the times that I've come over and sat with you guys, what I appreciate is what you've done with Tammy, uh, going through and doing QuickBooks on your own to see exactly what it's what the bottom line cost is to run that. That's forward thinking, and I greatly appreciate that because when it comes time for this, and, and we're trying to see, okay. What is our end goal here to figure out? You know what what the, the public safety needs. That real number is going to help tremendously, rather than I know the third almost thirteen years I spent over there. Majority of the time it was a guessing game. I've been going through the budget three or four times, you know, on my own. It's a guessing game. I, I appreciate the fact that you guys have the forward thinking to say, okay, let's figure this out real, real number time. Well, I always want to know what was in there. Totally. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's huge. Uh, you know, one of the things is everybody, you, know, you got one person down in the county, and, and, and everybody's going, I need, I need, I need, I need a report for this, I need a report for that. And we all do it, we're all guilty of it. But, you know, when you look at the report, you might be a month off. And so for me, I want to know what I have right now. Right. Um, and so that's, you know, that's been one of those things. And, and, and Tammy has taken it very well. It's, it's, even though it was kind of a voluntold, um, would you do this, please? Thank you. <laughs> so it was an option in an aspect, but it wasn't. Um, but it's really been a benefit. And so she's really done really well at it. But I want to know, and, and there's a lot of people in the community that want to know. It's, it's so amazing. Uh, during this commissioner race, every single one of them has asked me, how's your buddy? There's, there's lots of budgets. Why the, hell, why the hell are you coming back to me about money? You know, but it's been one of those things. And people understand that public safety is a necessary evil, and they want to make sure it's there. They just want to make sure it's not being abused. And I, and I think that's where having these solid numbers. Well, right and also an election, I just learned that, just learned, not just learned this, but through this process, the two departments that it, it seems like just get hammered 
and during election is road department and, and public safety. Just get demolished. Um, but I and you mean, can't do anything. No, right. there, no, no, it's, no. It's a love hate relationship. Yeah. I mean, it really is. We, it, it, you know, and, and and there's times I'll be honest with you. You know, I driving down the road on the Motor D Creek and. It's like going, you know, across the moon and hitting every crater. I mean, it's like, good God. You know, where's the crater? Yeah. But then you realize it's rainy. And guess what? They can't do anything. And, and so even I've expressed that frustration and go, God, I just want to pull the data's driveway. You know, on that Saturday morning when you hit, you know, you just lost a kidney because it fell out of your body because it was so rough. But I've, I've stopped myself from doing that. But, um, you know, I think, and, and, and kind of go back, and it, you know, having them, having, having those, uh, those incredible numbers, I think, it helps. And it helps with people in the community to understand that, you know, you ask them where something at, and, and I think that's the, the huge part. There's a lot of, it's been thrown around the United States so much being transparent that it's even found its way here. And, it, and it's, I think people really want to know where things are at, and, and uh, public safety and law enforcement, you know, have just been beaten severely uh, the last two years with all the things on the national level. And people don't realize, and I think the community doesn't realize, that what happens on the national level, it hits you know, the smallest part in the broader county. So we've, we've had to kind of play some finesse and, and everything else with that. So well, it's like, you know, the body cameras, those aren't cheap. Granted, you guys got a screaming deal. And screaming. I mean, but still, I mean, those are things that you had to do because a national level. You know, not that they're a bad idea, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. it's you, those are things that are forced upon a small agency that doesn't have the funds. And the larger agency and now now you're figuring out how to pay. You know, thank the city for picking that up. That's huge, but still. There's other instances like that that you guys are, are paying for because of Boston, New York, or whatever you want to whatever you want to say. And that's a small percentage, but it's painting the entire Picture. profession, yeah, yeah, with a very wide false brush. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I kept saying that one million police officers did their jobs while it was the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 That never makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and one of the things when it comes to the folks that did, we, we did a lot of change last year with the, the construction and, and the uh, moving things around. So there's some things that aren't going to happen in this next fiscal year. We have to finish the hallway and we have to get that. Um, but for the most part, we did have to do the SES work on it. We forgot our interview room. Uh, and it wasn't until yesterday, so now the fire marshal. Some of our cases have been working that have dawned on me that we don't have any interview room. We have a room, uh, there's no carpet, there's no camera. Uh, and that reminded me that last June uh, I had the same conversation as the sheriff that uh, we need to get a recording system that's functional. And, and so Seth is on that. Uh, I did tell him uh, we're going we're gonna to have to ask for some. Forgiveness if you go over and, and bring in that, but he's the only source I have to do that. And that's a, unfortunately, it's a very necessary for us. And how we escaped not having that uh, for the better part of seven, eight months is just amazing. Um, and then I realized we're sitting in the conference room uh, doing interviews without a camera. And so that's one of those, you know, another funding mandate of your interview. So there's things like that, but for the most part, a lot of that, we've got all, we've 
we've had some, some change in, in the ranks, obviously. And so uh, hopefully that's all settled. You know what, I think, I think where you guys are on new grounds is, is you have a group, you have people that are willing to sit down and work together. Okay, that hasn't happened in years. That have actually wanted to sit down and work. And I think that's where we're going to make the best headway and get the plans done to, to prevent this. It's not, there's no bad blood, there's no, none of that work. We w actually want to sit down and work. So I think that's the difference, a huge difference in this aspect, uh, you know, where, where the willingness to work with each other is going to be there. You know, unfor unfortunately, you know, the bad side is too is we're not going to be able to make everything whole. You know, and you know, and, but I, I felt your pain last night. You know, getting beat up a little bit at, at city city council. You know, um, but also in the same retrospect, you know, the county, the county, and, and I've shared this with the commission, uh, the other two commissioners, is we're not a cash cow either. You know, and, and so we just want to do what's best for the community. Well, that but, and that's the nice thing is we're able to sit at this table and work together, you know, and, and that hasn't happened in years. No, this has been very positive. <laughs> I am so thankful that you guys are, are amazing. That was one of my most frustrating points of last night. Unfortunately, we missed it. Or maybe it's fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't wrap their mind around it, and it really frustrated me. So when I went in and talked to them about, you're talking about $25,000 increase in a car. And you know they're looking at they're they're going good that's twenty five thousand. Yeah, but I I'm just talking about public safety. I'm not talking about detention. I'm not talking about dispatch. I am talking about twenty three hundred line that. That's the only thing we're talking about. I did not put any dispatch cost in. I didn't put any detention cost in. And you know, and they're and, uh, an unknown number. They're wrapping their they're they're holding on to it like you know. Fort Knox is holding on to gold. I don't know if Fort Knox has any gold in it anymore. <laughs> Back in the day when it, yeah. <laughs> when it did have gold, they were holding on to it like that. And so there was a lot of misconception. There's a lot of an unknowns. And, and it was very frustrating. I had a, a nice discussion with the mayor after after the meeting was done. And when I expressed my frustration, I I continually I asked again last night, please tell me your expectations. If you want me to be the sheriff, you want me to do the job right, you have to tell me what you expect. Because I cannot perform the duties if I don't do what you want. And again, and Doris agreed. He even had Doris looked at him and said, Yeah, he's asked us twice. Well, last night was number three, number four, and I still didn't get a damn answer. And so I still don't know what they want. And so I'm, I'm really hoping that the, the city county uh, committee will really bring some light and do some education in this aspect. And hopefully, something very positive can come from it. Yeah, and I think I think we're on the right track, at least to answering the first question that Chair Obert shared, uh, and that's this 33 percent. I think we're getting a lot closer to that. Um, so let's move forward with with this plan, uh, uh, and then let's let's meet again uh, to figure out problem number two and problem number three. That work? Just as we're not meeting next week. No, I'm going to work. I'm going to suggest July. Yeah. Let's get Debbie back. Yeah. Let's get you guys back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's get past the holiday and then <laughs> meet yeah. again like that on Wednesday and make it a working meeting so Parker yep. doesn't have to sit here and <laughs> yeah, let's, think about all the work she has to do. Let's do that. I think I think we've made some headway. I know there's still a lot of questions left. Um, and, and, you know, guys, I'm sorry that we had to take some of your revenue, but, I mean, I, I don't want to see another way. Just no, temporarily, and, 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 I really and, and, don't see this as a long every single yeah, year. And, and now that we're working together, I really do see us able and, to put something together. And I, and I think that, you know, Mike, Mayor Evans last night, he told me, he says, the, he really appreciated three hours of Brandon and I spent with him on Monday. Um, it gave him a good understanding. He's taken that approach that he wants to understand. He wants to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Right. And I'm, and I'm hoping that um, with that panel again, we're going to have that communication have, have that They need to understand that they have some skin in this game, but they, that it's going to require some effort on their part. Right. And 
I know I pissed off a couple of them when I said, well, if you don't want to work with me on it, I guess you can get your own PD. Um, I know that hit a, his soft spot. At the tune of almost $2 million. Yeah. Um, and, you know, well, the startup would be pretty yeah, expensive, pretty but I mean, that's not our goal whatsoever. No, no, no that's not. <laughs> and like I told him, you know, I said, guys, I'm not, this is a number that I'm comfortable with based upon population. You know, it wasn't the fact that I'm going to gouge you every year for 25000 or 30000 or 80000 or whatever. This is a number that I think and feel for that perspective to the population of the county that this is, a, that this is an adequately fair number. Because, like I told them, I'm about equi uh, equality across the board. You're less than a third of my population, so you're taking up over half of my time. The same people pay for the same service in the county. And so we can't meet everybody's needs, right. and we understand that. But we have to be doing our due diligence to make it equal. And so, um, and, I, and I hopefully, uh, and well, I know Mike understood that. I think Doris got that. Um, I think Matt was just trying to figure out how to get out of the office um, in, in the quickest fashion. I didn't even actually see him walk out. So he was like roadrunner when it was adjourned. <laughs> Um, there was a couple of us that were ready to get out. Yeah, I yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> But, but you know, okay. exactly, <laughs> thank you. So, <laughs> you know, having a, have an open conversation about what we need and where we're going and, and being at everybody, that is something I don't think has happened in the past. Is that, you know, no one has an exact idea of okay. what, what needs to be done. And, and obviously, as commissioners, you have an idea of what we do financially and fiscally, and even with you guys that have experience in our office, but unfortunately, things, uh, change. things have changed. Yeah. And so, if yeah. we're not over here communicating what's going on in our world, you're not going to understand. Same with the city council. So, a big uh, piece. Yeah. I'm sorry. A big piece with the city that wasn't brought up last night, and I think it's something that we need to talk about. And it goes back to the very basics of our job, and that is the economy. You know, I think it was President Reagan that said, is the economy stupid? Well, it is the economy stupid. And you look at the difference between the county and the city and what happened in the last 15 years. In the last census, the city of Townsend grew by 11 people. The county grew by 26%. That's to almost, what, 1,500, 2,000 people. You look at that, and then you look at the economy of the two. Broadwater County, we don't qualify for a lot of grants because we make too much money. I'm not saying we the county, I'm saying we are citizens. They are of the upper income level. The people in Townsend, with the 11 person growth, are at the bottom. What's the taxes done for the county side? They have spread out between those more people, uh, which is exactly the formula that the state has built the entire tax structure on. What happened in the city of Townsend? 11 more people, prices go up, it's a smaller number of people paying those higher prices. What you're asking is exactly right. What happens when the economy goes up? Crime rate goes down. What happens when economies go down? Crime rates go up. Where are most of your calls? In the city because your economy is down because they didn't have that growth. And I'm not talking about you know bringing in a million people into a subdivision. I mean commercial growth, bringing in business that brings in people who are working um, yeah, retirees in their 50s who have money to, yeah. you know, enjoy life and recreate versus cause you guys trouble because mm -hmm. they're just, you know, barely getting by. And that's where, you know, and when you look at the dynamics of what's going on in the south and even up in north um, and a little bit on the backside lake, you know, when you look at those, it's not, it's not property crime so much. It's not the, the trespass and the theft and the criminal mischief and stuff like that. What we're seeing especially in the downward departure of the economy and everything else is the, 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 the violence aspect. When you look at domestic calls right now, it is more common than not that either a firearm or a knife is, is, is being utilized in those calls. And it's because people are frustrated because taxes, lack of employment or whatever it may be. Um, you know, it just the overall atmosphere of society. And that's what we're seeing in this both ends of this. They are the upper of the middle class, and they all have good jobs, but they've also, being part of the upper middle class, have also got themselves in, in, a, in a bad pickle. And more often than not, I hear from people that they're upside down in the car, they're up upside down in the house, um, because they borrowed, 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 because they had good jobs, and either they lost them or something happened, and now they're upside down and they're in a pickle, and now we start having to 
domestic violence issues. So we're seeing that on that end, on, in that atmosphere, and when you come to the lower level um, of, the, of the middle class and the, the, the poverty level in some of the residents of the city, um, that's where they're, they're struggling just to, get, just to enjoy life. So we still have the property crime, we still have the violent crime, and we still have uh, a huge drug abuse issue, drug and alcohol abuse issue uh, within the city limits of Townsend. Which yeah. is hugely driven also yeah. by the economy, yeah. Yeah, especially the alcoholism. Yeah. And so, um, you know, Mayor Evans did discuss with us on Monday about the drug problem and, and how we're going to figure out how to combat it. Unfortunately, I, I don't have the manpower or the money um, to uh, put somebody in it. Um, currently, if I assign somebody to the drug task force, um, you know, for that $7,000, um, they're very adamant that that person's going to spend the majority of their time in hell Bozeman. That's not solving my problem here. And Do you know what it is? I think lunch with a cop. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to see an SRO, but what you're doing with lunch as a cop on the front page mm -hmm. of the paper, your arm around the kids' shoulders, that's translating to the people we want to attract to this mm -hmm. county. Yeah. It's translating to commercial businesses that we want to attract to this county, and it's doing prevention because that kid is probably not going to be getting into drugs and perhaps might be sitting here someday. That would be, I think, you can't extrapolate no. what prevention benefits are, mm -hmm. but I think you guys are doing amazing when it comes to that. If you want to do... You sitting at the table with, what, seven? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, we have uh, coffee with the cop on the 22nd down to Mint, if you guys would like to partake. Monday the 27th? Wednesday. So, Penny's been adamant about it. Yes, Penny. It's a month. great idea. That would be the 29th. The 27th. The 27th is a Monday. No, it's the 22nd. Oh, 22nd. Oh, yeah. I won't be here. Oh, you guys won't be here. No. What time? Uh, 10 o'clock. 10. Yeah. She, she redid that back room, so she's doing Yeah, it looks really nice. She's doing stuff. a steakhouse yeah. again. Yeah. So she wanted us to come in. I'm like, I'll come in drink coffee and talk to people. I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, one other question I have for you is um, the price we're charging, $63.50. DOC is saying, and a lot of counties are upset about this, as you well know, 65 is the cap. Why don't we go to 65 this year? It's not much, but would that hurt? Well, we just, just got 68. We just talked to the jail administrator in Billings, and he got 68. Was the DOC? Yeah. Isn't that those set through a work, uh, work up? You yeah. have... There, it, well, you can't just bump, no, and, and, and maybe no. it's changed in the two years I, I've not been in. No, we still have But to that was it. done through a... There's two DOC forms that they have, yeah. two different form lists. And depending on which one you do, one is <coughs> extremely uh, lighter than the other. And so what we've been at 6350 is that we went with the, the higher formula one, um, because the other one took us down to about 42 bucks. Oh, we don't want to go down. No. no. And so That's I, not helping us. So, Sorry, bad idea. Yeah. Since DOC had put a cap, and it's, it's, uh, I, I thought it was $69 uh, is what their cap was for any facility. I have really avoided the conversation piece of letting it be for um, Because it, it, might, uh, it might have a real effect on what we're looking for. And so I thought, you know, let's just kind of play it out. Um, Batista and his and uh, Adrian Slaughter, I'm sure you know both of them. Um, they usually are MSPOA meetings and they kind of give us hints of what the DOC is doing and where they're going. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it's regional facilities around the state uh, for detention centers and people that have, which, you know, uh, it's fine to find a handy for one of the regional jail.